Hello, welcome back to this short drawing course. And today we're going to be looking at, at how we can use basic shapes to draw more complicated objects. We're going to be using shells as an example. Shells come in all shapes and sizes from this beautiful but simple ammonite to long spirally ones, short stubby spirally ones, spiky ones, and some very complicated ones like this. Um, we're going to do three drawings, one of an ammonite, one looking at the spiral, and then one much more advanced looking at drawing from a shell like this. So let's get started. This first drawing will be suitable for all the family. So here we have the spiral shape of the ammonite. And in order to start to draw it, you must first imagine a box it would fit in. So I'm going to draw this straight over the top. So a box that the ammonite fits in. And then if we look at where the spiral comes next, we have another box. And then within that, we have another box. And then another one. And another one. And so on. So by starting with boxes, we can show that much, we can work out much, much more clearly where everything is. Let's translate that into a drawing. I've put my picture to the left so you can see it. And I'm going to start with that box. I'm drawing the box out in pencil. That's a little bit harder so you can see the pencil. When you draw it, Press lightly, so you can rub it out easily afterwards. Let me have a box there, and another one coming in there, and there. Okay, so that's my basic shape in boxes. I can then start to just cut the corners off, coming around. Doesn't matter if you go outside the boxes a little bit. Coming around. Coming around. And round into the middle. That is my basic start for the ammonite. If you want to get your curves just a little bit smoother, it's worth turning the page around and using a natural curve in your hand to draw with. You'll find you get a much, much smoother curve by doing that. Okay. So now it's time to have some fun with it. I'm going to work with uh, felt tip pens. So let's start with some of those interesting wiggly lines.
So I'm just working a little bit of colour to start with, get those lines all established. And then I can rub out my pencil uh, and work more into it. And while I do that, I'm going to cut to some pictures of work that students have done. Um, working from the ammonite, which show that it can be something, once you get the basic shape, something you can really play around with, with pattern, with, um, with colour, and so on. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so I've been applying colours with the felt tip to my piece of work. And now, I don't know if you remember, felt tips are very wettable. Uh, so I'm now going to start to just use a little bit of water to firm that up a little bit. So... I've put the felt tips on quite scribbly to start with. A bit of texture in there. See how it all turns out. I am a bit scruffy anyway. Do you like the word to be quite scruffy? Try not to go over the yellow lines that I put in earlier which are the veins. But if I do, I can always come back and try and draw them back in again. So those scruffy marks are just sort of blending out now that I add some water to it. I'm just going to take my time. Carry on doing this and I'm going to dry it and draw back on top. Okay, now drawing back into this. I'm using the black biro and I'm just going to use it to define those ridges a little bit and also to put a bit of texture in this picture. So I'm just making a start here and looking at those little textural marks that are everywhere. Looking, there's a little bit of shadow as well. Can you see these marks starting to build up the surface to make it that a little bit more interesting? And there's my finished drawing. Okay. That was a nice, simple shape to draw. We're now going to move on to something a little bit more complicated. Here we have a long conical shell. And to look at how to draw this, I say it's slightly different. Instead of the box, it, we start with a simplified shape, which is a kind of triangle. with just the top corner chopped off. And look at how these spirals change direction. I'm going to draw from tip to tip spiral. One, two, three, four, getting closer together as they get further down. This is my basic construction drawing. Apart from the angle there, all of these are roughly parallel, running down and gradually the gap between the lines gets smaller. 
So let's see how that turns into drawing in practice. This time I'm going to be drawing just with pencil, but the construction drawing lines I'm going to draw in with a red pen so that you can see them clearly all the way through. What I would recommend is that you press very lightly with a pencil when you're drawing construction lines. So we've got one line at a bit of an angle like that, and another one at an angle like that, and it cuts up. And sort of across and then we start to get these lines which cut through gradually getting closer together now don't worry if you don't get the exact number of those curves because there's so many of them that's my basic construction drawing and now i'm going to start the actual drawing so you can see within there that that shape curves around i'm pressing hard so you can see this and this spiral bit forms a sort of curve there You see that all right? This is kind of joining up. And at this point, these bits, the sort of waste bits, are almost here flat. And on to the next one, drawing top and bottom. So just curving very slightly, and the next one. Notice how these shapes, each shape is slightly more curved on the right than it is on the left, by a steeper curve. Made on a bit too small, just going to correct that. There, that's better. Gradually getting just a bit more curved as we go along. I did my construction lines just a little bit too close together. So I'm going to just space them out just a bit more now. Okay. okay, that's the basic drawing. I can't rub out my construction lines, but now we're going to move on to try and making that look like it rolls a little bit more. So I'm just sharpening up my pencil. I will have to use a little bit of rubber. What I'm going to do is Towards the bottom, I'm going to make it the line much, much darker. And then as it curves upwards, it gets lighter. I'm just going to repeat that all the way down. The bottom line's quite dark, curving up and getting lighter. So I hope you can see that, that simple change from uh, light at the top to dark at the bottom helps make this look 3D. If you're working with a pen, you'd use a thicker line going to a thinner line to suggest light and dark. You can carry on working on this as much as you like, working and blending back into it, perhaps doing some of these ridges that come across. And if you are to do the ridges, I would recommend keeping the lines quite blurry so I make sure you notice the direction that they're traveling put them on fairly lightly and then do the same darkening them towards the bottom so they're lighter at the top 
darker towards the bottom. Okay, so you can have as many of those ridges in as you like. To build up, <coughs> excuse me, to build up the shape. Here's an example from a student. And here's another one working back in with pens and felt tips and so on. And this basic principle can be adapted to quite a range of different shells. For example, this drawing again by a student, you can see that basic triangular shape and another triangular shape here with the rings going around it. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to a more complicated shell. Okay, my drawing is going to be done in a coloured pencil. I would normally start uh, do all the drawing right from scratch uh, with a yellow pencil so that um, all the other colours can cover it, but um, you can't see the yellow pencil uh, wet very clearly uh, on the webcam. So I will draw my construction lines in orange. Starting with, so first of all, is that quite a steep angle there? And then a shallow angle coming backwards. And then it goes back up again. And across. That's my center line. This point, the sort of angle like that going upwards, a slight curve on it. Oh, oh, looks like I've done that too long, that line, so I'm going to bring it all in just slightly to that point. That's better. Then halfway along this point, is the next spiral a little bit more of a curve and then the next spiral again halfway and then halfway again for the final little bit oh <laughs> little message on my phone right that's my basic construction now i'm going to start to work out and draw again i start off with a light color but because you wouldn't have to see it I'm going to have to use a darker one. Trying to see where these curves meet the shapes, the simplified shape. This ridge kind of opens up then, doesn't it, down here? I don't know who that is, peeing away. I should look at the message later. So always looking where it meets, where the curve meets the outer box I've drawn. If you draw it for life, these sort of techniques you might do as a quick sort of sketch working it all out before you do a proper drawing looking at those spikes there as they come around
Okay. So that is my initial sketch. Now I need to start to work into it. So I've rubbed out as best I can those construction lines and now to start working back in and I think I'm going to start with these ridges, these lines that come across because they really do help define the shape of the shell. Notice that I'm pressing harder towards the outer edge and it's getting lighter in the middle and then darker again. Just the way that the lines seem to get lighter and darker on the shell. At some points those lines disappear so I let them disappear. Trying to keep these lines fairly fuzzy. Just moving on a little bit onto that lip where I see the shadow. Putting in these darker parts in brown. Start putting in those. Ridges to the inside. I'm going to carry on defining with the brown, concentrating on where I can see lines rolling around. And darker shadows. Okay, I've finished applying my basic browns and hopefully you can see the image is building up. I'm now going to start to add um, other tones using orange and yellow and black to really define maybe just through these rayos just a little bit of blue okay so working straight back over to get that area to blend a little bit and notice how i'm getting a grade of shadow from the darker brown into the orange And as I look at it, I realise I missed a bit of darkness off of that bit just there. So let's get that back in. I'm carrying on now and you can hopefully see that I'm creating a range of tones from black through brown to orange and then eventually into yellow. I've tried to lighten a little bit some of those top edges as well. A little bit more definition just underneath there to help that hole feel like it's really opening up. It's a bit better. It's important to make sure that where there is a very definite line to keep it bold and definite and sharp such as the edges and these openings but make sure that where you have lines like these ridges you keep it much more gentle and soft looking in general where that sort of shadow is around here oh, shadow on my to my hand 
and there's a definite sort of line show marking that ridge isn't there darker spot on there a little bit of sort of line coming across the ridge which is great that will help define that and down and across quite faint those lines I'll be exaggerating a little bit and make it a bit darker just underneath the finer edge but I'm going to blur it outwards so that that darkness is shadow underneath similarly around here just put a bit of darkness there but just to sharpen the edge but just make it shadow underneath you can see how that makes that just stand out a bit more okay carry on with these shadows okay i'm reasonably happy with that so that is the end of today's session uh, I'm, I'm going to show you some pictures in a moment of what we will be doing next time okay next time we will be looking at uh, tone shadow so we will look at how um, shadow falls on basic forms like this like this and then we'll move on to looking at how if you understand how shadow falls on the forms on simple forms you could do uh, much more effective tonal work whether that is something that's a bit more expressive like this or move it back a little bit or something more realistic like uh, faces Have fun, and if you do do Facebook, uh, you can share what you've been doing with others and see what they've been doing at the Art for All West Devon Art Workshops Facebook page. Details coming up now. Bye-bye.